Hello and welcome to another Sprues and Brews video. Today we're looking at Paint Blitzer by Unto the Breach Hobbies. Now Unto the Breach kindly sent us a uh, bottle of Paint Blitzer to try out. And basically what it is, it's a paint remover for miniatures. Now, in the past I've dabbled with um, Dettol. And the problem with Dettol is it's a bit stinky and kind of smells out the house for a little bit. Also, I found in the past it takes a couple of passes with it to get rid of everything. So I was super interested when I found out that uh, Paint Blitzer existed. And by all accounts it's had good reviews. Um, it's simple enough to use. You submerge the models in the solution. Then you leave them for a period of time for the, uh, the paint to kind of get removed from the model. Give them a good scrub. Run them underwater. Give them a good scrub again. And in theory they should be... Um, you know, brand new and ready for painting again. So what we're going to do in this video is give it a try, see how it works, see what the result is like compared to uh, to Dessel as well. So in order to do this, I've got a selection of models that we're going to be trying to strip. We've got a resin uh, Ripper Swarm from Forge World. We've got a plastic uh, Swarm Lord from Games Workshop. We've got a metal Bilbo Baggins from about 20 years ago and a old metal gargoyle from even longer ago than that. So yeah, we're going to be trying to strip them, get the paint off them. I've also got a um, Hormigant, which has still got a few bits of paint caked in it. This is one that I've stripped using Dessel, and it didn't do a great job of it. So kind of want to see how it strips compared to them. I've also got a bit of a control Hormigant. This is one that I did strip with Dessel again. There's a few fragments of paint still inside it. But on the whole, that's looking pretty good. So that's going to be my control hormigant to see how well this paint blitzer does. So let's just move these miniatures out of the way. I'm going to have a quick look at this. So it removes paint, varnish and primer safely and effectively from your tabletop miniatures. Now what I will say on the website they mention, it isn't designed for removing basing materials. So on, you know, if you've got an elaborately based model or a large base, you might want to remove that first and then attach it to a new one. Um, sometimes it turns a bit of a gunky mess. Everything, even Dettol when you try and remove stuff like that, so bear that in mind. So it's really easy to use. You submerge the miniatures in solution, then scrub with a stiff bristle brush running under cold water. Plastic miniature leave 30 minutes to 2 hours, metal 30 minutes to 3 hours, and resin no more than 30 minutes. Now they have got a full guide on the website kind of going through how to use this stuff. Um, so obviously as we're doing this, we're going to do it in batches. We want to make sure that we don't leave that uh, the resin model submerged too long because obviously we don't want it kind of deforming, you know, as, as the resin gets eaten into by the solution. The metal and plastic model, they'll, they'll last a bit longer in there, so that'll be fine. So how we're going to do this is get a couple of plastic trays. We're going to pop the models in there and we're going to pour some solution over them too. So let's pop those in there. What I'm going to do is put the metal ones into one tray and then the resin in the other one. Now again, you might want to do this with a large batch, but with stuff like the resin one, you don't want them kind of sticking around there too long. So what we've done, we've poured some of the paint blitzer onto these models. Uh, we're going to leave these for a little bit and hopefully later on we'll see that they've cleaned up. So some time has passed since the first half of the video. Uh, some models have had a bit of a dunk into the paint blitzer uh, and uh, yeah, they've been washed off, cleaned up, and left to dry. And uh, yeah, pretty good progress with this. With a bottle, I managed to get all the stuff that you can see on screen uh, stripped. Now obviously I wasn't doing it in the most optimal way because for the video I wanted to have some resin, some metal, some plastic, so I had them in different tubs. So if you were doing this like yourself, you'd probably get a little bit more out of it too. Um, we'll look at some of the models that we looked at in here. So the resin rippers, um, I left them in for about 20 minutes. Now uh, the bottle said no more than 30. You can see there is still a little bit of red in the crevices, but it's you know perfectly fine. I could have probably afforded to put them in there another five minutes or so and try and scrub out the rest of that residue, but I was a bit concerned about melting the resin, but there's been no kind of damage to the detail of the model, so really, really happy with how that turned out. So perfectly safe for resin. Um, I would just say keep an eye on the clock because you probably don't want it to be in there more than 30 minutes because it, this stuff is noticeably softer 
uh, and I imagine if you left it in for an hour or something, you might lose some detail on resin specifically. Uh, metal modeler, however, absolutely brilliant. So the metal models are left in for about three hours, and uh, Bilbo here looks brand new. All the paint stripped off, looks uh, perfect. So definitely going to be using this for some uh, eBay recoveries and any old models that need a, a fresh paint job. Uh, speaking of which, we also had a Hormigan and a um, Gargoyle in the first batch, which had been previously done in Dettol, but had left you know quite some paint on there, and these stripped off completely fine. None of that horrible kind of sticky. Uh, if, what you find to see if you do um, Dettol, sometimes if you get water on it, it just turns into a bit of a gloop, so you've got to be super careful that you don't do that. The advantage with this is that you literally just scrub it off under a tap. It makes it so much easier. It doesn't have that smell, so they cleaned it really well. Uh, the gargoyle, there was a few bits of caked paint in a few places. So on the bottom of here, you can see, however hard I scrubbed, I couldn't get rid of that. I think it might even be some kind of like bonding agent or uh, clay or glue or something that they've used to stick this together. This is a gargoyle I picked up on eBay. But uh, all the kind of like yellow staining that was on the wings, that's all gone as well. So really happy with that. And then the, the, the kind of biggie for me was the plastic model. So we had a um, an old hive tyrant in here, uh, Swarm Lord, and he looks great. He was in for about two hours. Uh, again, gave him a good scrub. Um, you don't necessarily need to like fill an entire tub this side with it. If you put the paint blitzer on the surface of it and let it kind of like eat into the paint, it doesn't necessarily need to be dunked in a big vat of the stuff. Um, obviously, for Tethany's review, I had a fair bit in there and I kept kind of rotating him during the you know that three-hour period, and then it all just scrubbed off fine. So then I thought, okay, well let's see what it looks like kind of reusing this because I know people had mentioned that it is potentially reusable um, and I went to the breach hobby and said it is less effective if you do reuse it. So these guys here were put into the dregs of the other models and while they're, they're noticeably darker um, where it's not necessarily got all the um, the primer off them it is still stripped and you can probably see it best there on the carapace that you've kind of got a bit of a dark patchiness to it but it's still stripped and ready for for priming again so i was very impressed with that considering it was um you know after the stuff had been used so yeah pretty impressed with that so there was three of those that guy this guy has a little bit of coloration on his shoulder you can see he's kind of got a bit of a, a pinky ready tinge to him but yeah there was no issues at all really uh stripping him again using the the kind of the used residue obviously it wasn't quite as good as the hive tyrant clean but uh, this is not going to be really is it uh, i also put in something bigger a big turvagon that was um, originally uh you know painted up in in colors that i wanted to get rid of and um yeah even though he's a big awkward model this was quite easy to strip. I put him into the tub that I'd used for the other ones and then poured the uh, paint blitzer over it and then used a toothbrush and just kind of like massaged it into it. And then again, left it for about two hours, I think, on this one uh, and then ran it under the tap, gave it a good scrub. This one, because he was so big, I did have to do a couple of passes just because it was a bit hard and cumbersome. I did actually remove him from the base as well and I did find that while uh, under the breach, say, it isn't really designed for basing materials, the Games Workshop texture paint actually removes quite well. There's a few little clumps here and there on bases, but I think because that texture paint is paint-based rather than being sand or something, it, it stripped it all off. So I was pretty impressed with that. So he was done. I then decided to do a load of Hormigants and a load of Gargoyles and some Tyranid Warriors. So yeah, fair bit out of the, um, out of the tub. And again, I was doing different tubs with different materials in to test the effect on them. You could probably do it a lot more efficiently if you're doing it yourself. So yeah, really, really impressed. I mean, I have to say, as soon as I'd kind of finished this batch, I actually ordered m myself a um, one litre bottle 
of Paint Blitzer because I've got loads of stuff that needs stripping and I was very very impressed with this. These old Tyranids have been waiting to be stripped for a long time and I'd part done them with Dettol but it stinks and sometimes makes a bit of a mess and this was great. The fact you could just put it in the tub, give it a good scrub, let it sit in there and then just scrub the paint off under a running tap made it so much easier. Now got to be careful because you're going to make a little bit of a mess. Obviously your, your sink is going to get filled with kind of the paint residue that's come off it and if you're scrubbing very vigorously with the um, toothbrush you might get splatter everywhere so make sure you um, ask a responsible adult slash the other half before you do it because it can make a little bit of a mess in the sink but not in the same extent of death or getting all slimy and stuff. It, you know it, it washes straight off so really really impressed. Um, I am going to be doing a Caradron army that again I've got which is all painted, strip that down and uh, looking forward to using this on there so I do highly recommend this because it is amazing stuff. So again massive thanks to Unto the Breach Hobbies for sending us a uh, sample bottle to do a review of. Um, there is a companion article up on the website too where I'm going to be talking about the steps of how you clean it and some more photographs of the models afterwards as well. So, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, we do lots of unboxings and battle reports and reviews on all sorts of kind of stuff. So, if you want to uh, give us a follow and like, that'd be much appreciated. Also, um, if you are buying any hobby goodies, we have an affiliate page to Element Games as well. So, if you use that, we get a bit of a kickback, which helps support the site. But until next time, I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.